Hello, beloved. This is Mother Miriam. Thank you for listening to the Station of the Cross, proclaiming the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. Heard around the world on your Android and Apple mobile devices. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. You can view the live stream on Facebook at Mother Miriam Live. Now, here's Mother Miriam. Good morning, beloved. Good morning, dear family. How are you? I am with you live this morning. I'm so happy to be with you. Um, we are. Uh, we actually closed on the house that we bought here in Tulsa um, yesterday. So um, we still need um, all of you. Did such a wonderful job, and we were able to purchase the house. Um, we still need. Um, quite a bit more to do repairs and divide rooms and all of that. So um, if you wish, um, some have asked that I give out the, um, uh, the URL, the address of the Life Funder that LifeSite News so graciously set up for us, and I'm going to find it for you here. It is one word, Life Funder, L-I-F-E-F-U-N-D-E-R dot com, and then forward slash the name of our community, uh, Daughters of Mary, just the uh, initials D O M for Daughters of Mary, and then Mother of Israel's Hope, M O I H. So together, it's lifefunder.com, D O M M O I H. If you're able to assist in any way, we are grateful. God never. Um, he has, since the day we begun, beloved, we've never had uh, tremendous funds behind us or anything else. I, and I think before now, we've never even sought to raise money. But um, God has provided our every need, and he will continue to. So um, if you wish to be a part of this very thrilling, exciting venture, finally blooming in Beloit, Kansas, uh, under uh, the most reverend, holy, uh, wonderful Bishop Gerald Vinke, um in the city of Beloit, which has one Catholic church, St. John the Baptist, with a uh, pastor that uh, I couldn't have designed myself. He's so wonderful. He's wonderful. He's holy. He's orthodox. He's absolutely wonderful. Um, Father um, uh, Jarrett, Conradi, and I'm going to try to see if we can have him on the program with us so you can meet him and ask him questions, and I'd love him to share his story with you. So um, there's another uh, thing today I, I want to make you aware of. Um, LifeSite News is putting on a conference. It is, let me see the name, <clears throat> um, Sustain Life. It is... Oh, well, here, it's, um, the title is Unmasking COVID-19. Unmasking COVID-19 Vaccines, Mandates, and Global Health. Unmasking COVID-19, colon, Vaccines, Mandates, and Global Health. John Henry Weston and his team at LifeSite News have had unbelievably revealing interviews on LifeSite News. If you just watch the John Henry Weston show, just enormous and tremendous and show that unmasking needs to take place. Some questioning even if COVID-19 is a true vaccine uh, rather than a pathogen that's going to do damage to our bodies. A number of, so many people have died. Thousands have had adverse reactions to it. It's still in the experimental stage. And um, uh, it, it could be very dangerous. So, um, and, and the wearing of masks as well, they're being mandated. And um, I think it's already been proven that we, not only do we not need them, but it would be um, healthier uh, in some cases without them. So I'm not telling anybody not to wear a mask. I am not suggesting you don't wear a mask. I'm saying that the news about it and man, being mandated 
uh, uh, some people being arrested if they don't wear a mask, some people being asked to call the police if they don't see someone in a mask. It has reached hysterical proportions and evil proportions, beloved. So LifeSite News is going to bring us up to date on all of that and clarify things. So um, you're free to wear a mask. I would almost beg you not to take the vaccine. But um, again, it's your decision. It's your decision before God. I read the um, Children for Life, uh, Children for God Life site the other day, which has an update um, on COVID, keeps updates going. And they said there's not a single vaccine, that ha- not a single vaccine that has not been either made with or tested by aborted fetal cells. There is no COVID-19 vaccine that we can receive that has not been made from the cells of murdered babies, not one. Again, maybe it wasn't made from the cells, but it was tested in order, and they have to keep retesting it. So uh, there's no vaccine yet free of uh, aborted fetal cells. Um, and they have on their site, Children for God, um, they have on their site, um, oh, I should go to it myself so I could I could see it. They have four, Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and one other vaccine, and they describe them. So um, that's probably one of your best sources. But uh, LifeSite News is coming out with unmasking COVID-19, and it's going to cover vaccines, mandates, and global health. And I received an email yesterday <clears throat> that if anyone cannot make uh, the date, all you need to go uh, go to, um, let's see, LifeSite News, one word, LifeSite, S-I-T-E, news.com, forward slash unmasking hyphen vaccines. LifeSite News.com, forward slash unmasking little hyphen vaccines um <clears throat> and uh the email i got yesterday from LifeSite is that since this information is so valuable uh, we want to it to be available to the largest number of people for that reason video replays on the conference site until february 21st for anyone they'll be available on the conference site um, and that is lifesitenews.com forward slash unmasking hyphen vaccines. You can go there anytime and register for the conference. You'll get emails and updates and you'll be able to ra- watch replays for anyone his, who is registered. So um, the email says, please encourage your friends and family to register for this important conference. Our experts will cover... How aborted fetal cells are used in COVID and other vaccines. It will cover the legal implications of COVID lockdowns and vaccine mandates. It will cover the truth about masks and social distancing and who knows what else. Much, much more, as they always say, but it's always true. So I would, I would recommend highly that um, we have registered for it, beloved, here at the Daughters of Mary, Mother of Israel's Hope, um, www.lifesite, S-I-T-E, lifesitenews.com forward slash unmasking hyphen vaccines. And it would be um, uh, very, very good. Uh, Because again, if you're registered and you cannot make it to the actual date of the conference, which will be there as you register, um, then you can, there'll be a number of um, replays of that conference um, until February 21st. So my beloved, I haven't been with you live for a number of days and I feel so bad about that. Here is the leak. Thank you, dear James. Um, Um... uh, the engineers at Sa- Station of the Cross just posted this for us. Children of God for Life is what it's called. And the, the, um, the link is uh, COG, standing for Children of God, COGforlife.org forward slash guidance. 
C for, ch- for children, C-O-G for life, F-O-R, life, L-I-F-E dot org forward slash guidance. Thank you, James. He's the engineer on the other end of the line, and he's just too wonderful for words. So um, he posted that for us. You know what? I um, There's so much going on here, and um, I want to tell you what's in my heart. I want to tell you. Um, especially since we've come to Beloit, uh, Kansas, we have a hundred women who have applied and we are get to come to us and we are getting one to two minimum requests every single day. One, two, three minimum vocation requests every single day. And it's exciting now that we're in Beloit. The little house that we've just purchased is not going to take more than a beginning eight people. We just need somewhere to live. Um, And we are looking for a very huge house, and uh, I don't know what that'll run, but that we could take a couple of dozen. But you know what, dear ones, every time I look at a large house, even if it could take two dozen women, it's immediately too small. I fear claustrophobic because we'd have to raise a few hundred thousand for a very large house, take women in, and still need to build a monastery. Time is so short. Souls need to be saved. Families need to be helped. So I'm going to tell you what's on my heart when we return from the break. And we are, will take your live calls, your texts, your emails today. And the toll-free number is 1-877-511-5483. And uh, email at mother at thestationofthecross.com. We'll be right back, dear ones. We stand at a crossroads in history. We can stand up for life, family, and a Christian culture, or we can stand idly by while the fabric of society becomes fundamentally anti-life, anti-family, and anti-Christian, slowly leading to its own demise. LifeSite News is the leading defender of life, family, and Christian culture. Through our news reporting, we seek to educate readers with information and zeal. They need to fight the most crucial battles of our day. And we need your help to continue that mission. You can support LifeSite News by following our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Another way to support LifeSite is to prayerfully consider becoming a Sustain Life monthly donor to help us continue to save lives in the culture. To donate, visit give.lifesitenews.com forward slash sustain life. Our staff of over 40 and millions of future generations Thank you for helping to save the culture. Hello, beloved. This is Mother Miriam. Many of you are familiar with Mother Miriam Live, but I wonder if you have listened to some of the other programs from the Station of the Cross, such as the Catholic Current. Father Robert McTague discusses important topics in the church and in the world each weekday at 5 p.m. Eastern. You can listen anytime to The Catholic Current as a podcast on the iCatholic Radio mobile app. At the Station of the Cross, we understand that life circumstances can affect your giving options, whether by moving or by switching banks and credit card numbers. Please let us know if recent changes have been made to your payment information so that we can better serve you as you continue to bless us with your financial support. Update your information today at thestationofthecross.com or by calling 1-877-888-6279, extension 104. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Welcome back, dear ones, um, to... Mother Miriam Live. I think I'm a little distracted this morning. I am so sorry. There's so much going on at this end. And um, it's all unbelievably wonderful. Unbelievably wonderful. You know, 
um, I, I mentioned just before the break that we did were able to close on that house that um, so many helped us to purchase. Um, and we're going to need more because there's um, work to be done. It always is the case. We need to divide bedrooms into, you know, each bedroom will be two cells for the women and, you know, all of that. But we're, we're good. We're fine. Um, uh, as soon as we can, we'll return to Tulsa and bring uh, our furniture here and everything is wonderful. So if I sound a little down, um, I'm not down, but I'll tell you, uh, I, maybe I am a little bit. The world is going so crazy so fast. And ever since our Lord penetrated my heart with his truth and brought me first from Judaism to Christianity through evangelical Protestantism, I was a Martian on planet Earth. I was. And I wanted to get to the moon with a megaphone to tell the world there was and he is the Jewish Messiah, and the Messiah is God, and he came to earth 2,000 years ago to take our sins, the sins that separated us from God, from him to die for them um, and to rise from the dead, to give life to all who will come to him. And I've lived for nothing else since then. I have not taken a breath since that day for anything else but to know and to love God and to make him known. 18 years later, as many of you know, after trying to save Catholics for 18 years, oy, I became one. You see, you all won, you Catholics, you dear souls. I, I've often said that in the synagogue, there is the tabernacle um, uh, with the Torah in it, the, the word of God, the first five books, the books of Moses. And there's a, a veil over it because what is sacred is usually veiled, and there's always a sanctuary light burning to show that the Word of God is out uh, the, in there, behind that veil. And that's where we get our tabernacle, with the living Word of God, Christ himself, in that tabernacle, veiled, and always the sanctuary light, always kept on um, to show that our Lord is there. And when I came into the Catholic Church, in 1995, I wrote my story and I said to all of you Catholics, thanks for keeping the light on. It is the fulfillment of Judaism and the full measure of Christianity. It is, and I know not everybody agrees with that, particularly my um, evangelical friends, that the church that I came from, very, very cons so-called conservative, non-denominational church, who I love to this day, for whom I pray to this day, uh, they gave me life. They taught me the word of God. I will eternally be grateful for them. Why, uh, our Lord, <clears throat> let me go further than them to see the truth of the Catholic Church, to know that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob became flesh for us in the Eucharist. Uh, it, you know, it, it, he can't be flesh. He's a man. Well, he's not a man. God is not a man. He's a spirit. And he became flesh in his condescension for us. And he went further condescension and he became our food. And I am in the church and I receive him in the Eucharist. I'm not going anywhere. There's nowhere to go but heaven or hell from here. And um, I have no reason to live other than to make him known, which is what, why I'm so grateful. I can't be grateful enough. I can't express my thanks enough for the station of the cross who first invited me uh, when I was thrown off relevant radio, um, invited me to do the program through the station of the cross. They are, they are solidly uh, orthodox Catholic people. And whatever I do that has caused other people to dismiss me, they have not. So I have the utmost regard for them, and I love every one of you that support the Station of the Cross uh, any way at all. Prayers, uh, monetary gifts, other gifts, whatever it is, I just love all of you. And then LifeSite News wanted to stream the radio program, so they came to our uh, Priory and set up a little camera for us, and we've been doing it ever since then. So it's both the LifeSite News <clears throat> and the Station of the Cross 
Monday through Friday, 10 to 11 Eastern Time, which is 9 to 10 my time. I'm in Central Time or um, 7 to 8 uh, Pacific Time for you early birds. But it, whether anybody can watch it live or not is not the issue. Uh, if you watch it live, <coughs> the, the advantage is that you can call in and ask questions but anybody else can listen to any program on the station of the cross.com, lifesitenews.com, uh, to the podcast. You can go back into the archives. You can listen each day that way, live streamed or radio only. So it's, it's a true, true gift. What is my problem now? <clears throat> I don't have a problem. Um, I just live with, um, I don't know how to describe it, the knowledge that the world is going crazier, falling into the depths of hell, maybe quicker than we're spreading the gospel to save them. And I think I mentioned once a uh, parable of, uh, it might have been written in screw tape letters, I, I know I, I've spoke about this in, spoken about this in the past, where the devil, mimicking our Lord, wants to send disciples out two by two, just like our Lord did. So he's training his little demons, and he sends them out two by two, and he tells them to come back and report to him. So they come back and report. We said, we got him. We told him. We told him there was no God. We told him. And Satan said to them, you got to be kidding these are Catholics. They're Christians. They know there's a God. You're not going to convince them there's no God. You've got to be a little smarter. <clears throat> so they went back again. They came back to report, and they said, we told them the Bible wasn't God's word. That it's just a man-made thing. And they, Satan said, you, you're not getting it. They know the Bible's God's word. You're not going to move them at all. Forget it. We've lost them to heaven. You're not going to touch them. You're not going to tempt them. You got to put on your thinking cap. So they went out again <clears throat> and they came back and they said to Satan, we told them there was time. He said, now you got it. You got it. There's time. Tell them that. Tell them there's time. That'll do it. Why will that do it, dear ones? Because there's no time. There's no time. That's why the scriptures say today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. There's no time. Regardless of the situation in the world, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> or the illumination of conscience that's supposed to come about, it's, it's uh, apparently uh, later than we thought it was. Hold on. But God is not slow about his promises, saith the scriptures. He's willing that none perish. So if we think there's time, and the enemy could think there's, make us think there's time. You know, someone will say, yeah, I know, I've been living in mortal sin for years, but um, you know what? And maybe this next Sunday, uh, I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll confess my sins because I'm afraid now. I don't want to go to hell. I mean, maybe things are, you know, shortening up, and I, I need to get back to God. Well... God would say, you foolish man or woman. He would call you a fool because you have no idea that you'll live this day, that you'll live out the day, or that you'll wake up in the morning, or that you won't die in your sleep, or that you won't get hit by a car. You don't know. And you say, no, I won't. I know I won't. Well, you have no idea. And God is greater than anything you can think or control. Um... You have no time. If you're in, if anybody, if you're in mortal sin, don't wait till Sunday. Go bang the priest door down and tell them you're in mortal sin and you must confess. But also, my beloved family, we have to tell the good news to everyone. We can't keep it to ourselves. We can talk about COVID, but don't, you can wear a mask, do whatever you need to do, but don't lock yourself in your house. You need to tell the world. If some areas or countries are on lockdown, which is causing innumerable suicides, it's just awful. It's demonic to lock a nation down. It's terrible. Um, if your phone is still working, pick up the phone. Write letters. Do whatever you can. We have to get the gospel out. You know, when, it, when the gospel 
was given the good news of God who came to earth to die for us that we might live. Um, there were 12 and one defected. So Peter Kreef once said, how could 12 disciples uh, convert the world and a half a billion Christians cannot repeat the feat? We must, we, we're given a calling, we're given the greatest privilege under the sun to have the knowledge, to be given the grace to convert our hearts to go to heaven. How could we not take the world with us? How could we not tell our neighbor, well, he's so mean, he lives alone, and he's kind of isolated. Go knock on his door and bring him a freshly baked bunch of chocolate chip cookies and beg him to listen to you. Beg him. Um, Paul begs. The Apostle Paul started Romans chapter 12 that way. I beg you, he says, urge you, beg you by the mercies of God to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, which is your reasonable service of worship. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know what the good and holy and acceptable will of God is. So I'll tell you what, I'm, I, I cannot be grateful enough that we have been able to move from Tulsa and that we are in Beloit, Kansas, under Bishop Vinky. Um, there's no way I could express such gratitude. Um, and for our local priest, Father Conradi, uh, we're under two men that uh, just couldn't be more wonderful and probably couldn't love God any more than any human being could love him. But we are limited. So here we've come. We've got a house. We can take eight women, and that's it. And I can't bear the thought of it. And I was going to buy another big house and raise money for that if we could, but that would take in two dozen. But I can't stand that either. The world needs to be saved. So there are a number of people who are really urging me that we could build a monastery. And they've shown me uh, some acreage land right here in the city of Beloit where we can do it. Um, it's probably going to take millions. I don't know how many millions. We're going to begin to draw plans. But um, I've, I think I want to do it. Otherwise, I'll keep buying big houses and never been able to build a monastery and never be able to take the women that want to come in. So we want to build something that will take maybe 50 women and get this monastery out to the world. So that's my heart, dear ones. Um, that's the break for our uh, half hour. And when we come back, we are going to take your calls, your emails, your texts, uh, toll free, 1 877 511 5483. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The future of the family is grim. As Our Lady of Fatima said, the final battle will be for the family. It truly seems as though we're in the heat of this final battle and we need your help. Our mission at LifeSite News is to educate and activate readers with the information they need to defend life and the family and restore Christian culture. We are currently the most popular pro-life website on the internet with over 40 million unique users every year. And we've been experiencing an even bigger reach than ever this year. But we need your help to reach more of the 7.7 .7 billion people on earth if we are to truly succeed in changing the culture. Please consider donating to help our mission of promoting the culture of life and fearless defenders of the faith like Mother Miriam. Visit give.lifesite.news.com to give today. Thank you for your support. The iCatholic Radio Mobile app is two apps in one. Your place to hear great Catholic programs and music. Here's what listeners are saying about the updated iCatholic Radio Mobile app. Through the iCatholic Radio app, I have listened to the sermons and teachings several times. The effect has been a deeper understanding of my faith and Catholic tradition. This app has truly been a blessing in my life and has increased my faith. With the new app, you can choose to listen to our programs like Mother Miriam Live or The Catholic Current whenever you like. But you can also switch over to the best in contemporary music.
music by Catholic artists. We even bring you hours of Gregorian chant every Sunday morning. If you do not currently have our app, download it to your iPhone through the Apple Store or to your Android phone by going to Google Play and searching iCatholic Radio. The updated iCatholic Radio mobile app, your one stop for great Catholic programs and music. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Hello, dear souls. Welcome back to Mother Miriam Live. I'm looking up at the ceiling because there might be something flying around here, and I didn't invite it. So I don't want anything flying around here that I haven't invited. Um, my dear ones, we're going to take your calls and your emails and your text Again, toll-free, 1-877-511-5483, or email at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Cody, we have on the line from New Mexico. Hello, Cody. Hello, Mother. How are you? I oh, don't I'm, know if you. I do yes, remember. I don't you. know if you remember me. The other, I yes, do. okay. I was going to say, do you remember our conversation? Yes. Um, I want to begin, first of all, by thanking one of your other listeners, Rosa, who called later and gave me a word of encouragement. And I was, in fact, listening to that. I heard that oh, whole thing. Oh, how beautiful. So. Good. Thank you, Rosa. Thank you, Cody. And thank you, Station of the Cross. Go ahead, dear. Absolutely. So I wanted to follow up with you on the situation. So, yes. Um, so I'm just not. Um, my folks asked me yesterday how this, how my situation was going with my partner. And now, when you say partner, um, I apologize, my girlfriend. No, no don't Excuse don't me. don't apologize. It's our. Let me just say the reason that I make an issue of that is that uh, God did not ask us to live with partners. He asked us to um, to marry man and woman. And you 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 your girlfriend, the woman you love and want to marry, um, if you say partner, nobody knows if it's a man or woman, and nobody knows if you're already living together. So um, if I recall, it is she is your girlfriend and you're not living together. Is that right? That is correct. Okay, I'm, I'm throw out the word partner. Soon. Okay, I got it. Okay. But don't, um, would she be listening to this program? Does she know you're getting ready to propose? <laughs> no. No, no, okay. no, no, no. Okay, that's good, mm-hmm. because you just let it out. So, okay. All right. I want to be there okay. when you propose. <clears throat> I wish you could. <laughs> I know. I wish so, too. <laughs> go ahead, dear Cody. I keep interrupting Definitely. you. Uh, throw the word partner out. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I, my folks asked me yesterday how my situation was going, and <clears throat> every time I try to explain to them that uh, that it's going well and she wants to try to push me outside of my comfort zone by, you know, teaching me to do certain things like to cook she or to use a stove your, top. The woman that you are uh, want to propose to is trying to push you yes. out of your comfort zone. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Exactly. And I very much appreciate that because, you know, being being blind and having some autistic features, um, you know, I was not always the most teachable growing up, and that's one of the other things that she really wants to help me with. And, you know, my folks basically keep saying, well, you can't exactly do that because you don't have sight. Plus you're a guitar. I I play guitar. I'm a musician. And if you burn yourself, you won't be able to use that skill or you'll, you can't do what? Go out on your own. You can't do what? Marry or go out on your own. Is that what your parents are saying? Yeah. I mean, they, they just have, they have so many concerns about it, and no matter what I tell them, it's just not working. Okay. All right. And uh-huh. and one of the things is that, <clears throat> you know, um, I've never really known actually how to cook, for example, growing up. And that's one of the things that she would love to teach me to do, and I'm very much grateful to her for that. And every time I try to explain that to them, they're like, you know, you don't have sight, so... Plus, you're a, a musician. If you burn yourself using a stovetop, you might lose that skill. And you I just know what? don't your believe parents that because I've got... Are sm- your parents, my dear one, are smothering your life. 
um, who is the one, uh, Frances, a woman, um, oh, she's well known. I you mentioned her name a couple weeks ago, and now I can't, or you couldn't remember it. I was wondering if you did. No, I, I oh my goodness. She was blind her entire life. She married, she had children, she cooked, she cleaned, she did everything. Um, your girlfriend is also blind, if I recall. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Does she have other handicaps? <clears throat> No, she does not. And she's living, she's also on disability as you are? Yes, living on her own, though. Mm -hmm. Living on her own, wow. Okay. And um, the last time, um, uh, so for the, let me just ask this, for the two of you to marry, would it mean you would marry and then move in Uh, Forget her pushing you to do things outside your comfort level, especially if it's moral, immoral. But if the two of you married, you could leave your folks and move where she is living now, that she has her own place? Correct. And would it accommodate both of you? Absolutely. Okay, so um, you're Catholic, Cody? Both of us. And you're both practicing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's, that's huge. Okay, so here's my question. Did, did you tell me you were 29? I don't quite remember that. Yes, actually, okay. you're, you're absolutely right. All right, very good. <laughs> I don't remember Francis's name, but uh, okay, good. <clears throat> um, what is preventing you? Let me just ask this question. Because she's on disability living on her own. And you're on some form of assistance as well. And if you moved in with her, if you married and moved in with her, you would have extra income to pay for the apartment and food and all of that, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's a straight question. What is preventing you from proposing to her and getting married and then not before? moving in with her what is preventing that nothing except one thing they have not had they have not my folks and her have not had good interactions with her um and um there have they've had a couple exchanges that that did not go well and they're basically telling me we don't approve of you someone who is critical of your family who is you know um who is um, supports certain things like, you know, she and I are both Trump supporters and they are not. Um, Cody, and, Cody, yes. Remember in Exodus where um, a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his wife? Yes, absolutely. I if guess you, really what I want to know if, is this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How much, how much since I've never been married before or really had this kind of thing happen to me before, how much should your family be involved in the decisions that, that, that married couples make? Zero. Zero? The, zero. The only involvement is their love for you, and if they feel strongly about things for or against, I think they have a duty to express it to you. If they're against it, if they're against you're marrying a particular woman in this case uh, because they've had um, uh, poor exchanges, communication, all of that, um, you can assess that. But the decision is 100% yours. You are a man. Thank you. You are a man. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Yeah. You're 29. You can be very grateful for your parents' care and support all these years. But uh, you can say, Mom and Dad, I love you. Um, I'm grateful that you would not hold back from me your thoughts, uh, your opinions, your, uh, the difficulties you have with her, all of that. I respect that. I, I understand it. But we do love each other. We are both Catholic. We are going to practice the faith. And we are going to be married. 
And I don't see any reason, Cody. Always be respectful. Don't talk to them disrespectfully. But you're no longer under them. And you need to say, Mom and Dad, I wouldn't hurt you for the world, but I need now to go off and make my own life, and I want to do it by marrying this woman and, if God wills, raising a family. Um, You got it. There are blind people who have done that in history, and we can do it. And I'll tell you something else, Cody. Um, We have a 3,000-foot priory, two stories, in Tulsa, 3,000 square feet, on two lots, and it's and we have a guest house, and it's worth a quarter of a million. It was assessed at that, but I am giving it to a incredible woman, who her name is Jerry Cooper, and she wants to make it Jerry's house. She is blind and practically deaf, and she's doing this on her own. She has learned to be so independent that she's going to take women in the main priory we have and men in the guest house. She's going to teach them how to live independent lives, how to cook, how to shop, how to go to the store, how to take the bus, how to be independent. They can be free. I remember, and live yes, I remember this from our last conversation. Yes, okay. Yes. So I just think it's so fantastic that I'm just turning it over to her. Whatever they can pay me, they want to raise money to pay me or, you know, do what they can for the house. And I say, fine, whatever you raise is good, but they have the house the minute we move our furniture to Tulsa. So this is fantastic, Cody. Um, I would um, I would go to your folks and say, Mom and Dad, um, I want your blessing. If I don't have it, Uh, That's a sadness to me, but I'm going to propose to whatever her name is. Um, And we're going to set a marriage date. I very much want you to be a part of that and uh, all of that and be at the wedding. It'll be a Catholic marriage in a Catholic parish, and I want you very much there. Um, If you refuse, if you're really against it, 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 it's heartbreaking for me, but I have to respect your decision. And I will let you know what the date of our marriage is. You got it. It's time, Cody. Do it. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Would it be okay to propose without saying anything at all, though? Because like I said, every time I yes. talk to him, it does no good. Yes, yes. You can let them know, know after the fact. Let them know after the fact. Say, uh, Mom and Dad, I, I want you to know that I proposed to, to her, and she said yes. And we have gone to a priest, and we've set the date of the wedding, and this is it. And we would love you to be there. That's it. All right. Always talk respectfully, not defensively. You're a man. You're now going to be head of the family that God is going to give you. You got it. Absolutely. Thank you very very much. All right, Cody. Do call back. Let me know how things go. And we will okay. pray for you. you. Okay. God bless right. you, sweetheart. Okay. Um, let me just see. Now, we have an email from uh, someone who writes it anonymously and says, at the end of um, uh, one of your programs, you were talking about the bosom of Abraham. As you said, this was where the righteous who would have gone to heaven, it's the, the bosom of Abraham is in the parable of Lazarus uh, and the rich man in the Gospel of Luke. Um And it was where the righteous went, the bosom of Abraham. Um, And as you said, this email says, where the righteous who would have had gone to heaven, if it had been open, um, uh, waiting until our Savior Jesus Christ died and opened the gates to heaven. So prior to heaven being opened. um, My question is, am I correct in deducing there is no longer a bosom of Abraham and that it is no longer an option? You correct. Um, the bosom of Abraham is where righteous went when they died. But again, um, when Jesus died, he went down um, to uh, tell those people, including Abraham, that the victory is won, that heaven is opened, and that's where they went. 
And so if there's a bosom of Abraham today, it's heaven. That's where Abraham is. So am I correct? No matter who we are, we meet Jesus at death and go to heaven, hell, or purgatory. You are correct. I know I'm simplifying, but this is an important question to me. Thank you, and God bless you. You are correct. You've simplified it wonderfully. When we die now, Jew or Gentile, um, if we've embraced Christ, we go to heaven uh, or to hell if we've rejected him, Jew or Gentile. And purgatory for those who are on, on their way to heaven but need a little cleaning up first. It's a place of suffering to purify us for heaven. It's not a second chance. There's the music for our break, beloved. We'll be right back, and you're welcome to call in. Love learning more about the church, but confused or disheartened by the struggles we are facing today? Follow LifeSite News Catholic on Facebook, Twitter, or sign up for LifeSite Catholic emails. And stay up to date on the constant stream of news about the Catholic Church. Our church is at a time of crisis, and we as laity have a responsibility and a duty to educate ourselves and stay true to the faith. LifeSite News Catholic is dedicated to keeping the laity informed and educated. To follow us, go to Facebook or Twitter and search LifeSite News Catholic. As Mother Miriam always says, we must live as if it were true. The Station of the Cross invites you to join us each day for the Liturgy of the Hours at 5 a.m., 3 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. Eastern. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. The Liturgy of the Hours is a meditative and efficacious way to foster habitual prayer. Also known as the Divine Office or Breviary, the Liturgy of the Hours is the daily prayer of the Church and is made up of readings from sacred scripture, writings from saints and theologians, and small reflections. We hope you will join us for this daily prayer of the Church each day at 5 a.m., 3 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Station of the Cross. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Welcome back, beloved, to Mother Miriam Live. This is our last segment. Um, there's still time to call in if you wish at 1-877-511-5483. And we have Edward from California on the line. Hello, Ed. Hello, Mother. Hi. How are you, sweetheart? I'm doing good. Good. I good. have Did two you questions call... for you today. Okay. Let me see if I could help. Go ahead. So why do why do these people... These um, people who are non-Catholic, why do they try to make themselves seem open-minded? And then when we give them evidence, they deny everything. Well, that's the question of the year and of all of life, Edward. Um, they seem open-minded. They think they're open-minded, um, but uh, their hearts are not open. Their hearts are not open. Um, it would be um, the grace of God that could penetrate their hearts. Um, and, you know, even if they deny it, if they give you the opportunity to at least tell them the truth, the Holy Spirit could, um, uh, could convict them. Even after your conversation with them, you never know that your conversation could not have been the start of the very, very tool um, um, 
that the Holy Spirit used to convert them. It could be Edward. So they could be immediately defensive. I know when I was a, an evangelical Protestant before I was Catholic, Catholics would tell me things and I would listen thinking that I had an open mind, but not open to receive error. And everything they told me I thought was error. So I rejected it. But look at me now, I'm Catholic. So you never know. And even if people are hostile, even if they don't see open, seem open, even if they reject your every word, always speak the truth in love and never hold back the truth. Mm-hmm. And my other question was, did our Blessed Mother really have no birth pain when she gave birth to her Lord? Really, yes. Um, she was free from pain because the, the fruit of the curse was that in, in Genesis chapter 3 is that the woman would suffer pain in childbirth um, because everyone was born in original sin uh, following the sin of Adam and Eve. But Our Lady was not. She was, uh, had a singular grace of being uh, conceived without sin, not just born without it, but even conceived at the moment of her conception in her mother's womb, uh, original sin was gone. And so because she was totally without sin, um, she did not suffer pain at childbirth. Thank you, Mother. Does that make sense? Are you 12, Edward? Yes. I thought so. Didn't I ask you that last time? Yes. Oh, that discourages you, right? You don't want me to ask you your age. I'm sorry. You no, could it's be. Fine, mother. Is it fine? You sure, Edward? Um, uh, you've yes, got the, sure. the you've got the heart and mind of a you're you're 12, but you have the heart and mind of a 28 year old. You're very mature, and I love it when you call in, Edward. God bless you. You ask good questions, and I and I know the questions you ask are on other people's hearts, but you have the courage to call and ask them, so it helps a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Okay. I planned on texting, but it doesn't seem to work. All right, and you know what? I do take calls before I take texts, so. Um, uh, the calls are better. I mean, they'll get the calls will get through right away. The texts and emails I take in the order they've come in. Okay. Okay, Thank Edward. You, God bless you, dear one. Thank you. Let's see now. We have um, an email from Joanne, and she says, "Good morning, Mother. Perhaps you've already addressed this, but I was wondering your thoughts about Pope Francis's receiving the tainted COVID vaccine." Uh, vaccine. Did I say vaccine? Vaccine. I have family distance from the church, yet texting me that the Pope has given the green light to receive the vaccine regardless of aborted fetal cell lines in production. Um, Joanne ends, may God continue to bless you, your mission and your community. Thank you so much, Joanne. I tell you what, I know the Pope has taken that vaccine and given the green light. I am um, heart sick about it. I am heart sick about it because um, the church allows in remote situations where it's really needed, um, I have to say some cooperation with evil. Um, I'm reading a, um, an article here from this past December um, that says the United States Bishops Conference has said that Catholics can take two of the three available COVID-19 vaccines, even though they were developed with remote connection to morally compromised cell lines. That's very nice language, morally compromised cell lines. It should say they were um, developed with cells from murdered babies. People should call it what it is. If we stopped speaking about abortion and we said murder, there might be a different outcome. Um, and, and it goes on to say, in a statement released Monday, the bishops also, and this is just December, the bishops also said it is morally permissible in some circumstances to receive a third vaccine developed in close connection with aborted cell lines. But that Catholics, listen to this, Catholics cannot allow the pandemic to desensitize or weaken our determination to oppose the evil of abortion. Uh, to me, that's 
an incredible contradiction. If we take vaccines from aborted cell lines made from or tested by, they're not made, if they're not made from it, they're tested by with them. And if they weren't tested with them, they couldn't be made uh, at all, even without them. So they are made with or tested by um, aborted cell lines. And that testing needs to continue to be uh, put into action for with aborted cell lines with each new batch it always has to be tested so um it's an it's an i it's an it's an evil do we do we do evil that good may come and we talk about morally compromised remote con- connection why is it remote because we're using cell lines from babies that were aborted years ago so what we are still Uh, reaping good i should live a baby had to die that i would live and not only had to die but i've learned through life site news john henry weston's programs uh children of god for life website and other sources that in order for those cell lines to be used those babies some of them are still alive it has to be used within five minutes It just can't be from a a miscarriage. It has to be immediate in order for them to still be viable. Um, It's it's an evil. And for uh, the bishops to say we cannot allow the pandemic to desensitize or weaken our determination to oppose the evil of abortion, how are we opposing the evil of abortion if we're trying to save our lives uh, from those aborted babies how what kind of logic is that that's how abortion began in england uh, with the lambeth council they made one exception for abortion within marriage the life of a mother who would be compromised by having that baby only within marriage was the only case and now Anybody can get abortion. We're giving out abortion pills that's killing young girls. You get abortions through the mail, everything. And and it, it wasn't supposed to start abortion. Well, it not only has made abortion available all over the world, but euthanasia. And now we're killing children that are born, that are even, in some countries, uh, young teenagers. It, it, it's insane. Of course we'll be desensitized to that. We cannot kill people to save our lives. <sighs> okay, that's it for today. I love you all. Live for God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. We'll speak with you tomorrow. Each weekday from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern, the Station of the Cross brings you Mother Miriam Live. Mother Miriam 